Please welcome Thane Campbell, Deep Science Ventures. Hi, at Deep Science Ventures, we've built 39 science companies. I'm Thane, I'm Dean of our college where we've launched the Venture Science Doctorate, a new kind of PhD program, training a new kind of scientist who builds a science company to solve a global challenge. And I'm thrilled to nominate Sam Cryer, founding CEO of Thermilon today, because Thermilon are accelerating our transition to resilient cities. In today's cities, our walls are falling in flames from Notre Dame to Johannesburg. In resilient cities, we can prevent those fires and abate gigatons of CO2 as we do it. I'll allow Sam to tell you exactly how. And as he does, I hope he can convince you to join him in building resilient cities, abating gigatons of CO2 and saving lives. Thank you. Breaking the wall to fire safe, affordable insulation materials. Samuel Cryer, Thermulon. Hello, good. Uh, morning, just. Um, thank you, Thane, for discussing the use case of aerogel materials, which is what we make, super insulating aerogels, in new builds and tall buildings, and their USP of fire safety. Today, I'm actually going to talk about old buildings and the use case there, because the buildings that we currently have are pretty rubbish. 22% of the current EU CO2 budget goes to space and water heating of our buildings. And that is really down to the fact that these buildings are very inefficient and that Europe is littered with old buildings. From your very pretty villages to picturesque streets and towns and even the, even some would say, more hideous concrete monstrosities, every single building needs to be highly energy efficient to hit our net zero goals and reduce that 22%. But how are we actually going to do it? Well, we need to insulate them. And currently, if you insulate a building, what most people are doing in retrofit is they get some plastic, some polystyrene, polyurethane, they slap it on the outside, and job's done. But actually, with a lot of these old buildings, they're too pretty. No one wants to put anything on the outside. They're in heritage, nature areas. And so you have to insulate internally. If you do that with a plastic material, you have damp problems, mold problems, and you can actually affect the structural integrity of your building. And so everyone is going back to these more traditional materials, mineral wool, sheep's wool, mushrooms. You see all sorts of different things coming out there that are breathable, but the problem is they're really quite inefficient. They're incredibly thick. You need sometimes 40 centimeters on a wall. And inside, when it's already a small old building, it's just too thick. You need high performance insulation materials, which takes us to, of course, aerogels. So aerogels have these incredible space age technology properties, such as Fire safety, as the, uh, Thane mentioned. They're super insulating, which means you need half as much when you're insulating internally. And they're also breathable, so you don't have these damp and vapor issues. Additionally, we make them in a powder format, which means that you can put them into a range of products. Here, they've been put into a blanket where you've nailed it onto a wall with these black studs. And here, uh, this was a project that we did where we took aerogels and we put them into a traditional plaster and insulated directly onto the wall. So the question is, why don't we see aerogels everywhere already? Well, aerogels were kind of big in the 90s, right? And much like many things that were in the 90s, they are old technology. Where we've seen things like mobile phones, they have scaled production, reduced price, and improved performance, aerogels just haven't managed to do that. They're 90s technology and 90s pricing, which means they're really only affordable for the very wealthy. So what we've done at Thermilon is we've developed a novel chemical process to make aerogels affordably, scalably, for the retrofit revolution. How do we actually do that? Well, the first, we use cheap recyclable reagents, such as mineral-based silica precursors and cheap hydrophobes. Secondly, we have a fully continuous process. And thirdly, we use highly scalable and lower capex equipment, which means that we're aiming to get half price at pilot scale and five times cheaper at industrial scale. What have we actually done over the last four years since our inception in 2019? We've built a state-of-the-art lab out in West London. We've grown to a team of eight people, including PhDs in chemistry, engineering, uh, expertise in op uh, operations and finances. We have scaled our process to hit the right performance metrics in 25-litre batch production, and we're currently optimizing a litre an hour continuous production. 
And we've also started commercial engagements. So we've worked to take our powder. We've done a 25,000 paid pilot with one of America's biggest insulation producers, as well as integrated successfully into a blanket product with a German manufacturer. We've raised over 1.3 million in equity capital and 1.6 million in grants. The latest grant that we won actually two days ago was to take the powder and incorporate it into barrier layers for electric vehicles. So what does this mean? Well, as you can guess, we need to make a lot more aerogels. And to do that, we obviously need a lot more money. So what we're going to ask our people here today, if you are an investor, we're opening a round in January to take this to the next scale. That's 25 times continuous production and into a 1,000-litre batch production so that we can really kickstart the retrofit revolution. Thank you very much. You would have had 30 seconds more, uh, right? Uh, more to questions. show more beautiful buildings also from yeah. France, right? Of course. <laughs> In case you didn't notice, I'm French. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's go with the questions. Um, and um, yeah, who would like to start? OK, I have a question for you otherwise, right? OK, we have here one question, please. Yeah, very impressive approach. What, what I'm wondering uh, here in the document, seeing that you didn't file any patents. So, I mean, yes. why are you running that risk being copied by anybody who does reverse engineering on your Yeah, material? firstly, the material can't be reverse engineered. So you can send it to anyone and they, they won't be able to. It's an aerogel, much like, um, it's a loose powder, so please don't open the sample. <laughs> but it's, um, it's an aerogel, like aerogels that are already on the market. The, the key IP is in the process. We are, have actually decided we will patent now. So we've got, I've got the draft patent in my inbox, um, and we're, we're doing that at the moment with the idea of a lot of the process equipment being in trade secrets. I think it, you know, ultimately, when it comes to FTO and investment, you do need that protection to carve out your patent space. But we've, we've been pretty hot on the patent since day one. OK, next question. I cannot see one here. Gitter. And then Elizabeth, please, first row. Thank you for, the, for you running all the, the time with the microphones. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, very smartly. Um, I'm just wondering how you're going to market will be and how long it will take and uh, when it will become truly affordable so that if I want to do sure. it, that I will just you know, call my, I don't know, painter yeah. <laughs> of, of my choice. So we're focusing on scale up of the, uh, of the material. Um, and to make that powder and to work with construction product manufacturers to put it into products. And that way we're sort of, um, we're great at processing aerogels and making them, they're great at putting construction products into market. And so that will be turn, working with them to put it into blankets, into panels and other products. When it comes to scale, our next scale, which is the current fundraising round, will be sort of mini pilot. So it's probably, you know, hundreds of homes. The next pilot scale within 18 to 24 months is sort of thousands of homes. And then industrial scale, which is tens to hundreds of thousands of homes a year, will be sort of like three to four years' time. And at your partners are, at the is moment. the next question? Yeah, so um, unfortunately, they're all under NDA at the moment. But the, the two people working with are one of the biggest US construction firms, uh, one of Germany's premium aerogel blanket producers. And we're also talking to uh, two French companies and a Japanese company that we're moving towards legals with for, um, for construction materials. All sort of like billion dollar plus revenue companies that have interest in aerogel technology. Okay, thank you. Elizabeth, you're the next one, please. Thank you. So construction industry is not the fastest um, on the innovation cycle. Um, how do you deal with that and, and expectations from investors to have a fast ramp up? Sure. I think the, like the two things there are we have a time to scale. So like we do have a bit more time to, to work with these bigger players. The second is in that industry, huge regulation around fire safety and energy efficiency is driving them to move much faster than um, we're seeing in other areas. For example, in the US especially, they're suddenly going, OK, how are we actually going to outcompete in this space? People are bringing new sustainable products on the market. We've got to bring our sustainable products to the market. Um, and so I think regulation is playing a big role in that. And the third is looking at, um, we're also looking at a, a number of other industries, such as electric vehicles, where there is a bit more pace and speed of innovation to, to put those materials into products. OK, we have 13 seconds, so I think I cannot take any other. Uh, uh, no, Frank, it's just nine questions. How many women do you have in your team? Uh, three. 
which is impressive in the construction and insulation material thing. So great, thank you very much. You. That was the end of the questions already.